in a tunnel like I, in Afghanistan. Huh? Uh, good evening. Uh, I want to say uh, before we start a big thank you uh, to Mr. Graham Graham Corner. You know the man. He uh, looked like because uh, oh, okay, okay, enough, enough. Because he invited me to come and do this for you tonight. Uh, and uh, I have to tell you how he found me because this is no joke. Uh, he originally found me in Armenia, which is where I'm from. Uh, Armenia, from a very small town, you know, uh, called Bumkrak. And uh, he was, oh, you know this place? <laughs> I remember you. And, uh, <laughs> ugly. And, uh, and he was in the Armenia, you know, and uh, he found me playing the piano, you know, in the local broth bar, bar. <laughs> And he get very excited and he said, Kev, if you ever come to the UK, look me up. So which is why I'm here, you know. And, and I live with him. So thank you, Graham. I live with him, which is why I'm doing this for you tonight. This is no joke. This is a true story. Uh, and uh, I live with him in the bottom of his garden. Uh, <laughs> like a shed. Shed. I think like a shed. But uh, mine's called D-O-G. It's very small. <laughs> and he take care of me. And he said to me, Kev, he said... Uh, why you keep going back to Armenia? He said, don't you have a passport? I said, no. He said, do you want one? I said, I would love a passport. He said, leave it with me. I have a very good friend called Richard. He's going to help you. And, uh, and I meet Richard uh, about two weeks ago. A lovely boy. He come up to me. He said, um, hi, how you getting on? You're really nice. And I said, yes, he's gay. And, uh, and he said, I'm going to help you and get a passport. No joke, ladies and gentlemen. Look, he gave me my very own British passport, which is fantastic. Yes, three people clapping. I... Uh, there's a, there's a picture in everything, you know? I, I have to change it, it's not me. But from now on, you can call me Michael Barrymore. So that's nice. That's lovely. But uh, the truth is, I come here because, like entertainers, you know, like the Raymond and Timkins Review and myself, we get paid to do this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you, when a comedian comes out and tells good jokes, it's because he's getting good money. And when he come out and tell crap jokes, it's because he's getting crap money. Tonight, I'm going to tell you a joke, so you know exactly how much that stingy bastard paid me to do the show for you tonight. Knock, knock. Exactly. So anyway, now, that's a bit loud. I, I'll turn it down here. Don't worry. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, sorry, you can't hear it. <laughs> it deaf bastard. Anyway, so I. Uh, <laughs> okay, he's upset. He didn't win. Now the thing is. Now the thing is, uh, Graham. He said to me, "Come play something on the piano, entertain the audience, because in Margate they love it here. They, you know, they're very excited uh, in the bingo." I said, "Okay." So. I said, what shall I do? Because I'm classically trained, you know, I play, I play all the classical music. And he said, no, 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 do something else. I said, what do I, what do I, what do I do? He said, do something pop. I said, I don't do pop, you know, because I classical penis. And he said to me, no, learn something, it's your language, I'm just trying to speak it. He said, learn something pop. I said, I don't know that thing, you know. So anyway, uh, this morning, he wake up, he turned around, he woke me up. He said, Kev. I said, get off. He said, Kev. He said, learn something pop. I'm going to help you. He said, who's your favorite singist? I said, oh, Elton John, because I'm a very big Elton John fanny. So he said to me, well, learn something from him. I said, well, I don't know nothing. You know, I never played with him. So he said to me, don't worry. He said, don't worry. He said, uh, I have the Elton John album. I give you the album. Are you laying eggs? What the hell are you doing? He said, I'll give you the album. You take, you listen, you copy something, you know. So he gave me the uh, CD this morning, no joke. He tell you the CD this morning. And uh, the scratchy CD, very scratchy CD. He said, uh, learn something. I said, what am I going to learn from this scratchy CD? He said, learn something and pay it for the audience tonight. Come on. And he smacked me on the bottom. So I smack him back. And then we play Kiss Chase for half an hour. It was wonderful. <laughs> uh, he's pretending he's got a limp as well. He's like, oh, don't catch me, don't catch me, you know. <laughs> I catch him twice. Who's your daddy? Now the thing is... So I take the scratchy CD of the Elton John album. I, take, I put it on this morning. I listen. I copy exactly. The way he sings, the way he plays, everything. 
So I'm gonna be playing with myself for you tonight. A beautiful, a beautiful song by Elton John. What the hell? Is she dying? What the hell are you doing? Someone give that woman oxygen. What's going on? Elton John's I'm Still Standing. Opa. The, uh, the CD version. And I hope you enjoy it very much. Thank you for that spontaneous applause. <laughs> Elton John, I'm still standing. The CD version. Thank you so much. Please sit down. Sit down. You know, I uh, I have to tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen. Why I come to the UK is because I am single and very lonely. I'm much more lonely than that. Trust me. Because uh, no, because the woman in my country in Armenia, uh, they are how you say very uh, ugly and hairy. I mean, you look at them, you feel sick. You go, what is that? Like this all the time, you know. No, you do. <laughs> You're laughing. That's true. It's like, it's, you see them walking past the street. You go, hello, nice to meet you. It's ugly. It's but uh, the woman in the UK, very beautiful. Even here tonight. A lot of beautiful women here. I've been watching you. You know, one or two ugly ones. <laughs> you know who you are. Stop looking around. But the thing is, <laughs> silly cow. She's like this. <laughs> oh, I can't even look at that. Now the thing is, if you are, no, you know what? I was gonna ask if there's any single ladies here. If you're a single lady, put a hand up. Go, hey! hey. One, two, a uh, gentleman as well. Nice to see you, sir. Okay, well, I was gonna pick on the. Okay, I can just about see. Lovely lady uh, with the glasses. Uh, what's your name? Donna. Donna, okay, Donna, it's very rude for me to ask you how old you are, forget that. How much do you weigh? <laughs> Donna, can I ask you a question? You are single? Okay, and uh, I'm gonna do something special for you on the piano. I'm gonna sing you, oh, okay, thank you for the permission. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna sing you a love song. Would you like that? You would like that. Now, I have to tell you where this love song comes from because you need to know the where this um, uh, originated. I was in South Africa uh, about four months ago. Uh, unintentionally, I took the wrong ship, but I was there. <laughs> I was there. And, uh, and I met uh, uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Do you know him? Right. You know the preacher? Yeah. Okay. And uh, well, I meet him and he said to me, come and do a concert, raise some money for the orphans, you know? So I did, and we raised two million pounds. And he said to me, how can I repay you? I said, just 10%. And he said, no. He said, I'm going to take you on a safari so you can see the real power of God. Now, can I ask you, Donna, uh, have you ever been on a safari? No? Anybody? Yeah, have you been on a safari, lovely lady? Uh, when you went on the safari, did you walk or did you jeep? Jeep. Of course, you're not stupid. You see... <laughs> I walked because Desmond Tutu, no seriously, Desmond Tutu, he thinks that God is going to save us. To be honest with you, it was the smell of my farts that saved us. To be honest, I'm crapping myself. But anyway, we are going through Kruger the Park. 
and we are walking through and you can hear the lions the tiger like this snakes and everything i crap myself you know but he's holding my hand you know and we are walking and he's praying Allah no that's the wrong prayer sorry uh, whatever you say and uh, we are holding hands and we are walking well anyway one night very dark no moon no stars raining windy and we are on a hill and my foot slipped true story this no joke i'm not making this up this is true and uh, my foot slipped and phew, straight down about 500 yards you know i phew, straight down and i'm like Dang! And he's like, yeah! you know. Anyway, I, I lost him in the dark. And for two days in the safari, I was on my own. No joke. You know how scary it is, the safari. On my own, two days. And then I come across, you look it up on Wikipedia. I was uh, two days, and then I come across a village far away from civilization. About 20, 25 people, very tall, skulls, spears, jumping up and down. And I spent four days with them because they tied me up. <laughs> And on the third day, the chief said to me, Kev, how he knew my name, I don't know. He said, Kev, I'm going to teach you a traditional African love song. So wherever you go in the world, if you sing this, the woman, she fall in love with you. So tonight, Donna, I'm going to sing that 16th century traditional African love song for you. And I hope you enjoy it. I, are you excited? Yes. Really excited? <laughs> oh God, you sounded... A traditional 16th century African love song. <laughs> now before we start, Donna, I need to get you in the mood. <laughs> Can I have some romantic lighting, please? Thank you. greatest country in the world it has to be said i say it all immigrants say it. we have to because if we don't we get kicked out you know and uh, i think you know this is a wonderful country and, and i have to be honest with you i had the privilege of touring with some wonderful comedians of the british you know like um, i toured with uh, michael mcintyre you know crap and uh, peter k he was fantastic and i toured with uh, a wonderful comedian uh, called uh, uh, jim davidson and Mr. Jim Davidson said to me, he said, Kev, he said, do you worry when you tell ethnic jokes? I said, no, why? He said, well, because ethnic jokes, you know, it's a very dangerous time. You know, you have to be very PC in the UK. I said, well, I don't care because I'm Armenian. I come from Armenia. We do jokes about our country or the surrounding countries like Iran, Iraq, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Russia, Georgia. We do jokes about them. They do jokes about us. Nobody has a problem. We all just go, ha, <laughs> that's it. We don't really do jokes about Afghanistan, it's because bless them, they get very upset, they get, you know, over emotional, they come over the mountain, la, 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 and get on my nerves, you know, so we don't do jokes about them. But uh, I think, what can I do to do jokes in this country and to get away with it? So what I do now is I do a joke and straight after it, I, uh, I do belly dancing. 
this way it breaks up the atmosphere. So even if you don't like the joke, you're already watching me belly dance, everybody hoopa, we're having a wonderful time, you know? <laughs> Obviously not. Now I have to say, here's a joke, here's a joke, I give you a joke. Uh, what do you call an honest Iranian salesman? As if. Two people. Rest crap. Let's try this side, let's try this side. What's the difference between my mother and a terrorist? You can negotiate with a terrorist. Thank you, I love you. I have to tell you one more joke. Now this one was told to me by one of the Indian waiters working at the Chinese restaurant. He said, tell this joke, they're gonna love it. And uh, it's fantastic, listen to this. Uh, Armenian, Iranian, Indian in the Atlantic Ocean. Big shark, attack! Eat the Iranian, eat the Armenian. Go up to the Indian, stop, look at him, swim off. And the Indian look up into the sky and say, oh dear God, why did you save my life? And the shark come back and said, nothing to do with God. Last year, I ate one of you people. My arse still burning. <laughs> I found your level. Now the thing is, I, uh, I have to tell you ladies and gentlemen that uh, honestly, uh, you're very lucky. Because, no, no, you are very lucky because you have a lot of wonderful shows in this country. And you know Graham is putting this kind of show on. It's very, you're very privileged, you know, to have this kind of entertainment. Because in my country, nothing, nothing like this. No musicals, no operas, we don't do any of that, you know. And uh, when I come here, Graham, I said to Graham, I said, Graham, we don't really do any kind of musicals in my country. He said, you're joking. He said, we have fantastic thousands of them here. I said, really? He said, yes. He said, you know what you should do? He said, you should write a musical about your life coming to the UK, then take it back to Armenia. You could make millions like Andrew Lloyd and the Weber. <laughs> and I thought, this is a very good idea, you know. So I sat there and tried to write original music. Very difficult. And uh, Graham said to me, you're struggling? I said, struggling. He said, don't worry. He said, I have a collection of uh, CDs, musical. I give, you listen, copy something. And I took the CDs, 42nd Street, Oklahoma, Annie, I took all of them musicals. And instead of getting inspired, I, uh, I took the most popular track from the musical. I've changed the words to suit my show. And I've written a whole new musical called The Foreigner. <laughs> and I'm going to give you an extract. We haven't finished it yet. Uh, I'm going to give you an extract of six or seven. What the hell is she? <laughs> Six or seven, okay, and uh, tell me what you think. Now, the first one is from a musical called Oklahoma, but I changed the words to suit my show, and it goes something <laughs> like this. dashing in your face and you hold on tight with all your might but you can't hold on to your suitcase Dover is where I came in <laughs> racing through the customs port meeting friends who in disguise thus far have not even been caught so I'm in my council house, lager and kebab in hand, TV and money to spend on a brand new Nintendo. I'm signing on the door, just signing on the door, but the glorious feeling I'm on. It's a hard knock life for me. It's a hard knock life for me. Queuing at the DHSS, getting so depressed. It's a hard knock life. The sun will come out tomorrow when they open the cargo door. Okay. La 
last one, last one. All I want is a room somewhere, courtesy of the Prime Minister. I loved Mr. Tony Blair, but David Cameron, he's a wanker. You know, I have to tell you, looking around tonight, some of you remind me of my grandmother and, uh, <laughs> and uh, my grandparents were wonderful people, honestly wonderful people. My great grandfather, he was a composer, uh, he composed many symphonies, he's dead now, <laughs> so he's just decomposing. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, my only joke. And, uh, but, uh, <laughs> But um, but my grandfather, he also composed, and uh, he composed one or two symphonies, you know. Actually, he's a big inspiration to me, because I remember, you know, when I was only this high a few years ago, he would uh, sit at the piano, and, uh, and he would always say to me, always, Kev, I think and those words have stayed with me all these years. I just don't know what it means. But you know, my mother, my grandfather's daughter, my mother, uh, she was an inspiration to me as well. And it's her birthday today. And a wonderful lady, my mother. And uh, she used to sing a song to me. And tonight, I would like to, because you make me feel so at home, you know, and very special. Um, and because I'm hoping that, you know, I can bring my family over from Armenia and will support it. I, uh, she used to sing a song and I would like to sing that song to you right now. And I hope you enjoy it very much. Some of you might know it and it goes like this. When I was just a little boy, I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. No. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I'm gonna play this piece of music for you. It's uh, my grandfather's only piece of music before he died. And he called it never ending. And, uh, and I'm gonna play it for you tonight. And I hope you enjoy it very much. And it goes something like this. Tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Graham, a big inspiration to me because Graham said to me, Kev, he said, uh, you should be able to speak the proper English, you know, if you are in the UK. And I said, well, I'm trying. And he said to me, well, you should go to ele ele electrocution. electrocution lessons. Thank you. But uh, very big shock for me because I go to, <laughs> I may be foreign, I'm not stupid. I go to an area to learn how to speak the proper English called Essex. You know it. I go there, I go there. And uh, the man in the classroom, very short man, you know, white socks, black shoes, he said to me, Kev, he said, uh, do you have a girlfriend? I said, no. I mean, I do now. I have done it. But uh, he said, uh, you don't have it? I said, no. He said, um, well, 
you keep taking pictures, are you immigration? Yeah. <laughs> he said to me, he said to me, learn what I'm gonna teach you with the Essex accent and guaranteed when we go to nightclub, the girl, she come home with you. So I'm gonna try this. Now I'm gonna try this on the lady that was really laughing tonight at me, the, the little lady. Hello, what's your name? Kelly. Kelly. Now Kelly, pretend you and me are in a nightclub and uh, you're dancing with your girlfriends and I'm dancing with my f f friends and you see me dancing and you think, oh, he's so sexy. And I come up to you with the Essex accent and I say this and apparently you come home with me. It goes like this. Oh, I laugh. I get in on. You want it. I bet you come back to my special jiggly special. Lovely big asset. You're a really cushy bird. You saw me get some snow. Love it. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Kelly, did that work? No? Frigid cow. So anyway, the... Uh, so instead, instead, I go South London. Oh, yeah. South London, you know it? I go South London to an area called Brixton. I go there, and the man in the classroom, very tall man, I think he played basket. He said to me, Kev, he said, uh, if you ever get into fight in Brixton, you need to say this, I guarantee they leave you alone. I said, please teach me. And this is what I need to do. If I get into fight in Brixton, I have to go like this. Do you see? <laughs> Please don't clap, don't clap. Because seriously, I don't know what I just said. So, I try one more time to learn how to speak the proper English. I go to an area um, in North London called uh, Tottenham. You know it? I go there and finally I give up. Because everybody in that town already talk like me. <laughs> now, I'm gonna do something special tonight. I, uh, I don't usually do this, because not a lot of audiences are worth it. But, uh, find a chair and sit down. And uh, he's hungry, get him something, he looks anorexic. I, uh, I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I had the privilege of touring with the uh, Elton John. No joke, this is true story. Elton John, about four years ago in Germany, we did a dual piano, two pianos. And, uh, and he was on the stage and, uh, you know, rehearsing. And then I, of course, come and I was practicing the classical. And he came up behind me, you know. And, uh, and I was like, get off, you know. And he said to me, okay, he said, why you play classical? I said, I play classical because I like to get the cheers from the audience, you know. Everybody go, hooray, bravo, encore, encore, you know, like tonight. And he said to me, oh, nice, nice. I said, Mr. Johnny, come back. He said, why do you play love songs on the piano? He said, I play love songs because I like to get the ass. <laughs> now, I also toured, with that, she's confused. I also toured with a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, musician called Jules Holland. Do you know him? Yeah. And he said to me once, he said, Kev, you should always do some boogie woogie. Rock and the roll and you shall get the crowd going. I said, why? He said, because that way they're going to clap their hands, go wild and crazy. So when they leave, they leave happy. So even if you do a crap show, it doesn't matter. <laughs> now, I don't know why he told me this. <laughs> but I'm going to do that tonight. I'm going to do some audience participation. <laughs> so I'm going to split the audience right down the middle, right down to the end like that. This side. So this side A, this side B. Okay? So side A, let me hear you go, hey! Not bad, that's nice. Side B, let me hear you go, hey! Hey! You're gonna win. Now, it's very simple. <laughs> Everything I do, you do. We're gonna start with this side first. You follow me. Everything I do, you do. Here we go. She goes, like ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. What the hell was in you? Oh my God. 
Okay. It's on the brain. Okay. You reckon you can beat that? Yeah. I think so too, to be honest with you. And uh, and a couple of gentlemen at the back over there, I can see you with your hands in your pockets. Next time, take it out because you'll hurt yourself when you pull up. Now. Here we go. You lose, you win. Yeah. I like it matters. <laughs> you sad people. I can just see them walking out tonight going, ha, 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 we won. You know, honestly, it's been a real pleasure for you to see me. I, uh, I, uh, I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, to each and every one of you, those who stayed awake, that, uh, honestly, it's it's first time I've been to uh, Margit. And uh, it's wonderful here. But uh, more, more importantly than that, I want to say it's variety. And you saw two different variety acts tonight. One musical, of course, and one uh, with the show and everything, you know, and the music. And uh, it's difficult, you know. You are actually very privileged because, you know, they don't do this very often. So uh, for me, if you don't mind, uh, for my love, my friend, uh, Graham Corner, can we give him a big round of applause tonight? Because I think he's done a wonderful job. I, I probably wouldn't bother coming to the next variety show because Katie Price and uh, Chico are performing and they're both crap, so <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm just joking. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to finish off by doing this boogie boogie number for you on the piano. Now, feel free to clap your hands, go wild and crazy, but in the middle I go very fast. At that point, stop, okay? Because you know it's very fast and I don't want to, as some of you don't even bother clapping anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But gonna... Donna, Donna, look at the fingers. Wait, her eyes popped out. She had to put the glasses on. <laughs> you dirty cow. <laughs> and Kelly's trying to get here before you. There, there. Oh, by the way, listen, I might have said a few things tonight that might have offended some people. I want to say straight away, I didn't mean it. If I say something to offend you, I didn't mean it. No, honestly, it's not my game because it's not nice, you know, to offend people. Like the gentleman when you were heckling me and everything, usually in a comedy club, I would ruin you. I'd make you feel really crap. But I did but I want to say. I, I, I didn't mean it. If I said anything to offend, I didn't mean it. Because that's not my game. I don't like to... No, no, seriously. You know, you're a wonderful gentleman. You sat and in, hopefully enjoyed. And then, you know, when I was insulting you with the ding ling ding ding dong yeah. I mean, that's... Yeah, you're a dirty cow, to be honest with you. But that's nice. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I just want to say, if I said something to offend, I didn't mean it, you know? Uh, I didn't mean that's it. And, and Donna, when I said you are beautiful. <laughs> now, I... Uh, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Fantastic. I've been Kev Orkian, this man here, and uh, Graham Corner has been fantastic putting this on tonight. And more importantly than that, you have been amazing to be here and sat down and enjoy it. And I hope I get to see each and every one of you again very soon. Take care, good night, good bless, and I love you all very much.
I think we should have another round of applause for the fabulous Mr. Kev Walkin. Come on, Kev, come back. Take another bow. Ladies and gentlemen, Kev Walkin, come on. <laughs> well, wonderful, Mr. Kev Walkin. We're going to finish your show now, actually. But there may be a, a little surprise. Where are you going? Oh, you're staying there, eh? Oh, <laughs> Um, so maybe a little surprise after this. Are we gonna? Is there any any Elton John fans in at all? Yeah. I don't do any either, actually. But um, I'm gonna do this for Mary. Look at me, Mary, when I'm talking to you. Because Mary was here at quarter to four this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Sat there, and she clapped when I did my sound check, which I thought was really good because I deserve the clap, which I think is really good. So uh, yeah, not on your own love will throw you a fish. Marvelous. Um, so we're going to finish off with an Elton John song. If you know the words, want to join in, please do. And it goes um, absolutely nothing like this. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, 